Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. James Gill and you've joined us for another clinical skills video. Today we're going to be looking over the knee. The knee is a vitally important part of our kinetic chain formed for the ankle, the knee and the hip. If any of those three joints are affected, then it's going to have a significant impact on a patient's mobility. So we need to be able to adequately assess all of those joints well. And today we're going to do a deep dive on assessing the knee joint. So we've been joined by a, uh, another medical student today and to start off our examination, obviously we always want to make sure that we are appropriately uh, gelling our hands. So uh, my name is Dr James Gill and we've been asked to do an assessment of your knee today. Uh, could you please confirm your name and date of birth? Uh, my name is Megan Struthers and my date of birth is 2nd February 1980. Thank you. So today what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at your knee, we're going to get you to do some movements and we're going to get you to lie on the couch and I'm going to assess your knee. That will involve me putting your ha my hands on your knees and getting you to move your legs around. Is that okay? Yeah. Super. So to start off, could I get you to take your shoes off please and just stand in front? Okay. And then turn to your left. Okay, so here we're having a look at the back of the knee to see if we can see any signs of a swelling here. And then if you could turn all the way to face the opposite wall. So looking at the legs from behind, we want to see if there's any evidence of a varus or valgus deformity, colloquially referred to as being bow-legged or knock-kneed. We also need to assess the ankle. And here we see a slight pronation or interning of the ankles, which can result in a slight valgus deformity to the knees. And if you could turn all the way to the opposite side. And again, checking the opposite knee to make sure there's nothing um, present behind. If we assess uh, the shoes, we can actually see we've got uh, wear patterns on the outside and across the mid uh, foot, more so on uh, the uh, right side, in keeping with what we've seen here. So, if I could get you to walk forwards for me, please. And we're going to do five paces, looking at the straightforward heel toe, and then turn and come backwards, please. Okay. Again, we're seeing normal pace there, normal um, footfalls, and no obvious issues. The five steps is very important because it, we need to go the, at least that far in order to engage with our normal gait pattern to see how somebody's walking. Thankfully, there's no signs of a limp or abnormal gait here, so we've not got anything to be too concerned about. So if I could get you to jump up on the bed for me, if that's all right. And then lie backwards. Okay, and relax your legs down on the bed. So, before we start, do you have any problems with your knees at the moment? No. Okay, so looking over the knees, I can see a couple of scars um, on the right knee and some bruises to the left, but no obvious inflammation, no clear swellings or uh, deformities. We also need to then assess for any wasting of the quads, which we'd see with knee pain. Now, when it comes to knee pain, um, we can lose up to 20% power on the quads over weeks um, if we've got significant uh, pains here, hence why the knee assessment is so very important. We're going to measure 20 centimetres up from the tibial tuberosity and then we're going to measure around the thigh at that point. And back down again, please. Okay. okay, so 43 centimetres there and we'll do the same again on the opposite side. So 20 centimetres up from the tibial tuberosity I'm just going to go round, okay. and we've got a similar 43 centimetres on that side as well. So to start off with, uh, I'm just going to touch uh, your legs if you don't mind to see if there's any heat to them. So as with all orthopaedics, we're going to be comparing like with like, so looking for symmetry, and there's no heat above or below the knee, and directly over the knees we've not got any temperature either. Now, we can have problems with gait with what's called a leg length discrepancy. So we need to assess the, uh, the, the, um, how long the patient's legs are. And there are two ways of assessing that. We have a true leg length and an apparent leg length. So with our true leg length, we're going to find the patient's um, uh, anterior superior leg spine and we can measure down toward the uh, medial malleolus. So we've got 90 centimetres here and then we're going to do it. If you could just lift up your shirt slightly so we can get to your umbilicus, thank you. And we're going to do this from the centre down again, showing 100 centimetres. 
and we're going to do the same again on the opposite side. So from the anterior superior iliac spine to the medial malleolus, and again up to the umbilicus. So we've got equal legs on both sides. So orthopedics is based around the simple look, feel and move protocols. So we've adequately assessed the patient in terms of their gait, in terms of looking at their standing position and the overall appearance of their legs. So now we need to assess uh, the joints themselves in terms of seeing if there's a fusion and any pain. So I'm going to start off on the left leg, checking for an effusion. I'm pushing down and then tapping directly over the patella. We've got a little bit of lateral movement, that's fine, but we're checking to see if the patella moves up and down and taps on the femoral condyles. We're going to do the same again on the opposite side and tapping down. So there's no problems there. As we're doing this, we're trying to uh, push any fluid under and around the kneecap so that if there is an effusion there, the kneecap will float up on that fluid and then when we press it with our thumbs, we'll get a patella tap as that floating bone contacts with the, um, with the femoral condyles. If there is no effusion, we may get a movement of the patella laterally and medially, but we're not going to get that click, click, uh, which is seen as the patella moves down. So we're then going to do the same again. I'm going to sweep on the medial side of the knee, so sweeping up on the medial side, moving any fluid around and seeing if it's come uh, to show with a bulge uh, present also on that uh, side of the knee. There's no problems there. And we'll do the same again on this side, sweeping up any fluid, holding it and seeing if it comes around to give us a bulge sign, which we haven't got. So we can be reassured here that there's no effusion to the patient's knee. We now need to um, have a look at the actual joint lines. So I'm going to take your uh, leg and put it at 90 degrees. And I'm going to press around the knee. Tell me if there's any areas of pain or tenderness for this. So we're starting off at the tibial tuberosity, where the patella tendon inserts into the uh, tibia. We're moving up to the patella uh, itself, and then moving round up to the um, superior patella tendon and into the quadriceps making sure that there's no pain here. We're coming back down again and going round the joint line. As we're pressing round the joint line, we're paying a lot of attention to see if there's any pain, which may indicate a problem with the meniscus. And then we're going to check over the lateral and collateral ligaments to see if we can find any obvious steps or pain. Finally, we're going to press up inside the knee behind, warning the patient this might feel uncomfortable. So I'm just going to put some direct pressure here Tell me if there's any problems there. Okay. So behind the knee there, I'm feeling to see if I can find a swelling that may be in keeping with a baker's cyst. Again, symmetry is vitally important, so we're going to do the same again on the opposite knee. Doing exactly the same again, checking the tibial tuberosity, up the patella tendon, round the patella, carrying on up the, uh, up the tendon into the quads, back down along the joint line to the uh, lateral and collateral ligaments and then checking up behind the knee. So again, we've got a normal test here with no issues. So we now need to move the knee. If you could take this knee and take it up to your chin, please. And then back down. Any problems with that? Mm -hmm. And we'll do the same again with this knee up and back down. Any issues there? Super. So to complete our movements, I'm going to do the same, but this time as I move the patient's knee, I'm going to be feeling for any added sensations. So any crepitus, any crunching, any clicks, or any movement of the patella out of alignment. So I'm just going to move your legs. Please relax and allow me to uh, do the movements. So pressing up and back down. Okay. And there's no obvious crunches or clicks. And we've got a nice smooth movement there. And I'm going to do the same again on the opposite side taking the knee and up, and I'm feeling during this if there's any abnormal sensation. Crepitus will feel like 
glass rubbing against glass, but thankfully we've got no problems here with that. Now, we have already seen that um, there's no problems with the patella tendon in terms of palpation, so I couldn't feel any steps, and we seem to have had good flexion of the knee, but we can also assess, if you just raise this leg up in a straight line for me, we can also assess the continuity of the patella because we've got a positive, a normal straight leg raise. And the same again the opposite side, please. If there was a problem with the patella, when the patient tried to move their leg, the patella is needed to transmit the force from the quads. So as they attempted a straight leg, that leg would dip down because the patella was not able to transmit that force through. Just relax down again for me. And I'm just going to put my hands either side and push down into the bed, please. Okay, and we've got and relax. And we've got a slight uh, hyperextension there in the sense that you can close the gap on my fingers, but nothing worrying with that. So having done our look, feel and move, we now need to do the special tests to assess the ligaments of the knee. So if you take your knee to 90 degrees, please, and just relax on the bed. So having a look at the knee, I want to look from behind initially to see if there's a sag sign where the knee is actually slipping backwards, suggesting that we've got a rupture of the posterior cruciate ligament. Now, it's very important we've established whether or not there is a step here, because when we do the anterior draw test, if we pulled forwards with the PCL having gone, we may have a false positive thinking that we're drawing the knee forwards, whereas actually we're just returning it to its normal position. Thankfully, that's not uh, present, so I want to do an anterior draw test. Sometimes you'll see clinicians sat on the patient's uh, bed and holding with their thumbs either side of the tibial tuberosity and pulling forwards. Personally, I'm not a big fan of that from an infection control standpoint in terms of sitting on the patient's bed. You can do the similar by again taking um, the um, tibial tuberosity with both of your thumbs and bracing against your own arm to then pull forwards. I feel that that's a slightly more um, appropriate approach to this examination. So, confirming that there's no sag sign there, I'm going to brace uh, against my arm, thumbs over the uh, tibial tuberosity, and I'm pulling forwards. So we've got a bit of a movement there, but there's not a significant step coming off the knee. And relax down again for me. And we'll do the same again on this side. So bring the knee up, bracing against my forearm, and pulling. Okay, and we've got no issues there either. So when we do this draw test, our thumbs are at the tibial tuberosity in case the knee actually comes forward, in which case our thumbs would drop over the top of that step, confirming that the anterior cruciate ligament had stretched or had potentially ruptured. So if we relax down, please. And we'll do the same on the opposite side, so bringing the leg up, and I'm going to check to make sure there's no sag sign, so the knee isn't slipping back, and we don't have a step going backwards. I'm then going to put my, thing, uh, my thumbs at the tibial tuberosity, bracing and pulling forwards. So we've got no step there again, so we can be reassured that the anterior cruciate and the posterior cruciate ligaments are intact. We then need to check for the lateral and medial collaterals, so I'm going to take the lady's leg, slightly bent, and I'm going to be pushing with uh, my left hand and pulling with my right, trying to bend the knee out of alignment. I'm going to swap over and do the same again. So there's a small amount of movement there. That will be normal, particularly in uh, a lady, but um, if we got significant movement and it wasn't being pulled back, we'd be worried about that. So to start off, I'm being careful of the bruising. I'm pushing with uh, my left hand, I'm pulling with my right, trying to open the lateral collaterals. Okay, so we've got a little bit of bounce, but nothing major. I'm going to swap over, and I'm now pulling with this hand, I'm pushing with my right, trying to open up the medial collaterals. So we've got no worrying features there. Now, in some textbooks, they'll discuss McMurray's test, which is used for assessing if there's any uh, damage to uh, the meniscus. That would be where we'd take the lady's knee and twist and turn her foot as we extended it. 
Personally, I dislike this test because there is a theoretical risk of damage to the meniscus. What we can do instead is get the patient to attempt to turn on their own foot. So if you could stand up for me, please. And what I need you to do is steady yourself on the bed and with one foot on the floor, just twist forwards and backwards. Okay, so if you stabilise yourself on the bed and putting all your weight on your left foot for me and just spin side to side. Okay. And if there's any pain with that, then we would assume that there was damage to the meniscus we hadn't found earlier. And if we could do the same on the opposite knee, so lift up and then spin again. Okay, have we got any pain at all with that? No. And the patient's in control of their own body there and were less likely to cause any significant harm. So the last thing I need to do is what's called an apprehension test. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to push your patella sideways as if trying to literally push it off. And I'm going to begin to bend your knee as we do so. If there's any problems, any worries, please stop us. Okay, so just coming up. So pressing over the patella and bending the knee. Super, so no problems with that. And we'll do the same again on this side. And Pushing the patella and bending. Great. OK, so you didn't object to that. That's fine. Thank you. So that completes our assessment and overview of the knee examination. I hope this has been useful for yourselves. Please drop us a comment down below and we'll see if we can uh, cover any questions that you might have on assessing the knee. And please, obviously, like the video because it tells YouTube that we're here. Thank you. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.